I'm going to paint the cake pan and just paint the whole complicated background and see how it works. Behind that cake stand is the dry erase board and the coffee station and all the cups and cereal and stuff. I'll focus on the cake stand here. Start with the center line and I'm drawing on a gray house paint actually. I don't know if this gray latex acrylic will take the gouache very well, but we'll see. I'm using a water soluble colored pencil and just drawing a few line segments for some key lines. And I'm thinking about am I looking up at that or am I looking straight across at something at my eye level here? Eye level's about here. Or am I looking down at it? And now I'm putting out a few colors, cad yellow light, permanent green pale, yellow ochre, pyrrole red, and ultramarine blue. You can make a nice dark out of that blue and that red. And let's try what happened. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Oh. It's not absorbing at all. Maybe if I mix the paint a little thicker, it won't beat up as much. Yeah, it's a little better. That was like a matte latex. Why is it resisting the gouache? Oh well, let's see what happens. I'll just put in a few line segments here for the darks using this big pointed synthetic round. Okay, so that stainless steel shelf in the upper right, this shelf is just sloping a tiny bit, and this higher one slopes up a little bit more. It's great to see this diner coming back to life again after the pandemic. And I always love the photorealists who, who did paintings of diner interiors. And I want to try to get a photographic look to this complicated scene. Middle of the day, I can't do both. Now the bottom of the cake stand is made of chrome, so it really reflects the lights and darks of the scene. And I'm, whoa, this is, oh man, the wet washes just beat up on this acrylic latex. I don't recommend this for a priming layer, unless you like taking crazy chances. They're going to come with my omelet pretty soon, so I better get this thing laid in. Okay, so another wash here. Getting a very weird... Oh, here it is already. Whoa. Okay. So I'm going to paint this cake. And then the wonderful reflections on the plastic cover picks up reflections of the window behind me. But I feel like whatever I do with this, I'm going to be competing against all the high value ranges in the background. So maybe I need to spotlight this cake stand. What I'm going to have to do is um, change the background and make it sort of um, darker blue like nighttime. You can't use the yellow blue on that. It's going to destroy your painting. No, no, but I'm going to just put a light wash on there. If it dissolves a little, that's okay. That's not going to be okay. It's going to melt. <laughs> oh, it's dripping down. I'm melting! Melting! Oh, what a world! What a world! Oh, a disaster. It's dripping all down. But I'm going to use that to my advantage. Failure is not an option. I'm going to make the spotlight on the cake stand 
and then darken the background so it looks like it's nighttime. And we're in this diner. Maybe there's music coming out of the woodwork or out of the old radio up on the shelf. And there's the ghosts of the old diners and the previous owners. And they're all sitting around and this one cake stand is getting that warm spotlight to bring it forward. So maybe it's a good thing that I melted out the background. So there's no lesson here, except maybe what not to do. But if there is a lesson, it's to have fun. And if something goes crazy wrong with a painting, you can always rescue it and change things around, get something magical out of it. Hi, kids. Look at some delicious magic. <laughs>